Hey guys, Horror Man back for another review. So today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the brand new Skybound exclusive Negan and Glenn 2-pack. Now this was available um, San Diego Comic Con 2016 at the Skybound booth and it was also available in limited quantities on Skybound's website. Now both of these figures were released, um, or at least the Negan was released previously in a different variation. Um, and then the Glenn is a figure that's coming out soon. Um, now you can see the artwork on here is pretty much the same exact artwork from the original release of Negan, which was also uh, available at Comic-Con and again limited supplies on the Skybound website. So you can see the packaging is really nice. Um, as far as I know, this is completely new on the back, and it basically just shows Negan uh, brutally beating uh, Glenn to death, which is really nice. <laughs> um, so you can see the Skybound website, Walking Dead website, and of course this is made by McFarlane Toys. So pretty good artwork on the box, pretty much what we would expect. And for people that missed out, on the Negan figure. Uh, I'm sure they'll be happy to have this artwork on here. So one thing that's really great about this figure uh, set is that Negan at this point is worth around 100 to 150 uh, min on card. He's even worth around 100 if he doesn't even have a box. So to have another Negan figure is just so cool. Um, I am definitely one of those people that missed out on the original version. So having this one just makes me pretty happy as I don't want to spend that $150, $200 on uh, adding another one. Um, now the Glenn figure is coming out in September. And for the most part, I believe it's the same figure. I think this one's just a little bit more bloody considering he's, you know, um, beat to death. So you can see he's got this crazy interchangeable head, and it is pretty gruesome, uh, but it definitely shows his death. And then with Negan, he has a different, uh, like a different variation on the figure as well. Um, you can see his jacket is completely covered in blood, as well as his face, and. The original release they had for him was a black and white bloody version and a non-bloodied colorized version. So this is the third version released for him. Um, so this again will be a color version that's bloody. So definitely a great set. Um, if you were lucky enough to pick one of these up, you paid about $50 for it at Comic Con or you could have got it for $50 on Skybound site. Um, now they are sold out right now and I don't think they're going to replenish any of the stock uh, but I was able to get this on eBay for $65 shipped. So let's go ahead and take this out of the box and get a closer look. Alright and here's Negan and Glenn outside of the packaging. Now both of them will just come with two accessories each and as I stated the other releases of these figures do come with slightly different accessories. Uh, for uh, Negan, he does not come with the iron that he had with the original release. And the Glenn also comes with one additional piece, which I don't want to give away um, since that figure doesn't come out till September. But I can tell you that if you do look up the, the Glenn that's coming out in September, the piece that he comes with is another spoiler. So, you know, if you're going to look up those, just be wary that. This, the item he comes with is an obvious spoiler, so be careful with that. So let's go ahead and just look at each one, one by one, with the accessories and articulation. Alright, so here's the Glenn figure. Now this is supposed to depict him right as the event happens with, uh, you know, his inevitable death. So this is definitely going to be a little bit different version uh, than what we've seen before. And again, it's definitely different than the September release as this version is covered in blood. Um, and the details are pretty good on this guy. Um, my only real complaint about him so far is that he doesn't stand very good, but this isn't very uncommon with uh, the McFarlane figures. So let's go ahead and get a close up of the head sculpt. So the head sculpt's pretty good on Glenn. I like that he has the baseball cap, which is something that we haven't had before. Um, 
but yeah, you can see there's little blood details all even on the hat. You can see he's got the more shaggier hair underneath there. Um, and then you can see he's definitely got the likeness in here. Um, the blood is covered on his face as well. And then you can see down into the jacket, which he has like a hoodie. Uh, even the blood drips down to here. So the head sculpt's pretty good on him. And again, the details on the jacket are really good. You can see the wrinkles, the different uh, lines and stitching all across it. You can even see a little textured pattern um, on the collar. And again, you just see blood kind of dripping all over him. Now, he has blood on his hands as well. So, I'm not 100% sure, but all this blood that's on him doesn't appear to just be from him. Um, you know, if he was to get hit in the head, he would definitely have a lot of blood on him. But I don't think he would have quite this much, especially on his hands. So I can't say for sure that if this blood is supposed to reflect uh, the events that happened before or um, just from getting hit in the head. But obviously, since he has blood on his hat and his face, it doesn't quite represent just what Negan did to him. Um, so. Even though the regular version won't have all the blood on it, I guess it's not that big of a deal as it doesn't just represent the events of him and Negan. And then down to the lower legs, you can again see all the blood splatter on the thighs and on the pants. He's got these nice wrinkles in the pants, which look pretty good. And then there's just a little bit of dirt on the shoes, not too much. Uh, I guess one problem with this figure is that on the back of him, he has literally no blood. So they probably could have done a better job uh, with that, considering he has so much blood on the front of him. But I guess it's just uh, the way this was made. So no real big deal, but really no paint detail um, on the back. Now in terms of articulation, it's pretty much what you would expect from any McFarlane figure. Uh, he can turn freely on the top, he can turn his head all the way around, uh, he's got plenty of tilt. He can look down and up. The actual hat doesn't move, but it does have this flexible type of uh, material to it, so be careful with that. Um, there's not really much at the waist here, he can turn just a little bit. You can go this far out with the shoulder. He's got a little twist here. And then he can bend the elbows about this much, just single joint. And then he can turn his wrist fully around and he can cradle it as well. And then he has a little bit of uh, up and down motion here in the crotch area. He can do a pretty far out kick, got a single joint on the knee, and then his foot you can uh, twist all around and you can go up and down just a little bit. So that's about it for articulation. Uh, you can even get a little bit of a weird twist here on the knee which doesn't make too much sense, uh, but it is there. As far as accessories, you're really only going to get two accessories here. Um, the first one being an axe, which looks very similar to an axe we've seen before in this line, so it's most likely a reuse. It's got this nice little curved handle here. And then you can easily just pop that in his right hand. And if you want, I'm sure you can get him in a two-handed pose as well kind of holding the top of the axe. The next accessory comes with is really crazy. It's probably the most brutal accessory I've seen on a figure, and it is Glenn's smashed in the head. You can see his eyeballs hanging out. He's got blood all over his face. I mean, it is insane. The top of his head's knocked off, back of his head's knocked off. So, yeah, this is definitely the craziest Walking Dead accessory I have yet to see. It's kind of sad, too, but uh, yeah, this is definitely in this set. 
So in order to get this on, you just pop that off very easily. Just a standard, uh, you know, ball peg that we've seen before. There's a little hole in here. And then you could just pop that on. And there he is. So yeah, I mean, this obviously is only good for displaying with, you know, maybe Negan uh, knocking him in the head, but it is easily the craziest accessory I have seen in a long time. You know, Glenn is not a zombie, so having a human uh, being beat up like this and sold as a figure is pretty crazy. Now, I was going to try and do a comparison with this TV series, Glenn Head, um, but unfortunately it has a peg stuck in the head as opposed to this one, which just has the regular peg stuck in here. So uh, it doesn't look like this is going to work. I could probably try to doctor it up and take this peg out, but um, yeah, it's just not going to work, which is a shame because it probably would look pretty cool. Okay, so moving on to what is most likely the main draw to this set, and that is Negan. Now this is the super bad, um, big bad guy for Walking Dead now. Um, he's been in the comics for a while. I believe he was introduced at number 100, but I can't remember for sure. Um, but he is also now in the TV show, so he's finally made an appearance there. Um, so this is a great looking figure. Um, we have various versions of him, uh, color non-bloody, black and white bloody. So now we have this awesome bloody colored version. Um, now he's just going to come with two accessories, um, most importantly being the bat, Lucille, and you can see this has a nice uh, barbed wire um, wrapped all around it, and then the bat is really bloody looking, I'm not sure if I can capture it really that good with this camera, um, but yeah there's a nice uh, blood paint all over this bat. So the details are a little bit hidden because of the blood, so it does not, doesn't look as shiny as some of the other releases, but it's really just due to the blood. And then you have this little knife, which is kind of cheesy because it's bent up and it's this thin, kind of uh, pliable plastic material. So I kind of wish they went with a harder material, but this is not that uh, surprising considered uh, most of Daryl's knives and the other. Walking Dead characters are generally with this kind of uh, flexible material. So let's get a close up of the head sculpt. So this is a really, really good head sculpt. Very accurate to the comics. I really like the grin that he's got. He's really a sinister character, so the kind of happy grin goes perfect with him. Um, the blood is well placed. You can see it kind of has this spatter effect, but it's also kind of thick and dripping off in some spots, so it's really well done. And then the actual detail in the hair is very good. You don't see paint that's kind of like in places it shouldn't be. You know, he's got this slick back hair. So yeah, I mean, I think they've done a really good job with this figure. Now, I don't have the original Negan figure, but I'm about 100% sure that, well, I shouldn't say 100, I'm about 90% sure that this is a reused head sculpt. Um, I've looked at other ones online, and I'm pretty sure that this is the same exact head sculpt. But again, it's the color version, and this is the bloody color version, which they have not done yet. So looking at the jacket details, this is really good. I love the biker jacket. You can see the buttons, the zippers. It's got the belts, the buckles. Um, you know, you can see them all over the place here. Really good. Um, and then he's got just like the wrinkles in the back here. You can see the belt. So yeah, this is this is the signature jacket and it's just really cool that they've done this so well. My only gripe with this is because of all the bloody details, I think they went a little too far with not painting at least part of the buckles. Um, with the original release, this buckle here for his pants and the buckle for the jacket was nice silver painted and it even had this kind of uh, scuffed up look to it and they completely left that off I guess because of all the blood um, showing on here but I think that was a bad move because it just doesn't look 
It just doesn't look as good. So the first release, I would say the jacket definitely is better. But again, because of the blood, I guess they figured they didn't need to paint it. Um, not horrible, but yeah. Like I said, the first jacket was definitely better. But I do like the blood stains all over here. The details are really well done as far as uh, you know the blood all over him. And even down to the pants, you can see blood all over him. You can see some distress marks in the pants, different wrinkles. Uh, but you can really see where the blood breaks up nicely. And I think they've done a better job with this figure as opposed to Glenn, because the blood actually looks like it's maybe, I don't know, just a little bit better. It's not just kind of just placed in random spots. So I do really like that. Um, also really like these boots, so like biker boots. I think they've done an excellent job with these. Again, these are things that are signature to the character that they've made sure to touch up. You can see the buckles have been painted, which is great. You can see the seams in the pants. So they really did try to make this as best as they can. All right, so looking at the articulation for Negan, again, it's pretty much what you would expect at this point. Um, he can rotate pretty good on the head. Um, he can't quite go all the way around, but that's okay. Um, the collar just hinders it just a little bit, but he can get pretty good left to right. Um, he really doesn't have any uh, up and down movement at all, so the collar and the jacket and this undershirt definitely hinder the head pretty good, uh, but he can look left to right. Um, you can go pretty far out with the shoulder, and then again, he's got the, um, the twist at the elbow and the cut. And then he also has a wrist swivel and he really can't cradle too, too much just because of the jacket sleeve, but it's not horrible. Um, there's a little bit of a twist at the waist, uh, no ab crunch. Uh, I can move the crotch area a little bit to give him a little bit of looking up and down. Um, and then you can go out about that far with the leg, about that far forward, so he's not going to be doing any drop kicks. Uh, you can bend the knee, and then you can do that weird twist right here. And then the boot is really cool. You can twist it. Um, he can go up and down. What, what I really like about it is it's hidden so well with this uh, buckle right here that you really can't even see where the articulation would be. So uh, they did a good job with that. And that's about it for articulation. Now in terms of accessories, I did mention that he has this little uh, holster right here. Now again, this is in that crappy kind of pliable plastic, so it's actually a little bit bent up looking. Um, and then you could take that same bent up knife and you can put that right into the holster. And it holds well in there. It doesn't go as far down as it should. Um, but it's just because of the way this holster is bent. So, yeah, not the best right there. Now, the main accessory, again, is the bat, Lucille. And uh, this is kind of like that same kind of pliable material. kind of bends around. Um, you might have to just kind of... Uh, bend his hand a little bit to get this in. Okay, so here he is holding the bat, which is, of course, the primary accessory. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm not really happy with the hand that they gave him for the right hand to hold this. I mean, it is terrible. Um, I had to definitely open up the hand to get this bat in there. And luckily, it is that bending material because I probably would have broke the bat getting it in there. Um, but yeah, it fits really loosely in this hand. Um, you know, that, that's actually kind of disappointing considering how uh, important this accessory is. So yeah, they should have definitely gave him um, a better bat holding hand. Um, but anyway, it does fit in there, thankfully. And I guess you can get him in a couple decent poses with it. Okay, so here is Negan next to Glenn with the bashed in head sculpt. Now this is definitely pretty sick. Unfortunately, because as I stated, there's no double hinge on Negan's elbows, you really can't get him in that swinging pose. But this is pretty much what it would look like after he just hit him and Glenn on his way down. So, um, you know, it's it's still pretty cool. 
Um, you can see that gruesome look uh, in Glenn's face, uh, and you can see that bloody bat. So, yeah, I mean, it's it does have like a cool payoff. I mean, it's definitely gonna look cool displaying these like this next to each other. All right, so for the first comparison, here's Glenn and Negan next to each other. And you can see that Negan is definitely a good bit taller than Glenn, so um, he definitely has a nice stature next to Glenn. And here they are next to Rick and Michonne from the TV series line, and you can see that Negan's still a little bit taller. Here they are next to the Rebel Tech Jason, which is almost in scale. Jason's just a little too small. And here they are next to the SH Figure Arts Big Chap Alien. And these are actually in really good scale together. I often uh, do display this alien with my Walking Dead figures. And here they are next to the Marvel Legends Black Panther, so you can get an idea of the 6 inch scale versus this 5 inch McFarlane scale. Here they are next to the NECA Terminator from Terminator 1, and this is made by NECA Toys, so you can see how the 7 inch scale matches up. Alright, so that's my review. So all in all, I think this is a really cool set. The main draw for me is definitely the Negan figure, which is really hard to get right now. You know, if you want one uh, from the original Wave, uh, which was also a uh, San Diego Comic Con slash Skybound exclusive, you know, you're going to pay upwards of around 100 to 150 for that. Even loose, it could go for that. So to have something that not only you get Negan, you get a second figure, it's very cool. Um, like I said, I got this for 65 on eBay. If you could find it for that price, especially like I did with the free shipping, I would definitely recommend it. My only gripes with it really is I think the bat could have been maybe like a harder plastic as opposed to this bendy stuff that they used. I wish the hand that he's, you know, the right holding hand, I wish that was way better than it is. Uh, it was really tough to get the bat in. I do wish they did double hinged elbows. Um, on him, but I guess people that had the previous version might have complained, but maybe it would have been justified considering the set is based on these two uh, in that, you know, climax scene uh, that led to Glenn's death. So, um, as far as Glenn, I think he's really cool. I wish he can get in that on his knees pose, but it was kind of tough. Um, and I do wish that you could swap out the head with the TV series version. I think it would have been really cool. Um, but, you know, that didn't happen either. Um, like I said, if you do want to get the Glenn figure, it should be coming out in fall, as opposed to Negan, which is not going to see a mass release yet again. Um, there is a Negan figure that comes out in the wave with Glenn, but he looks completely different. So it's from a different part in a comic, and it may not be the exact Negan that you're looking for. Um, if you have any questions, leave them, comment, and please subscribe. And uh, till next time, guys. See you later. Bye -bye.